Hey everybody, Sean here, and I hope you're doing well. Todd White has a new book, and that's what we'll look at today. So let's jump right in. If you're not familiar with Todd White, you can check out the Revealing Truth playlist on him for many videos of false teachings in the past. And now it would appear that he's joined the profitable book club of writers within the NAR movement. We can see here that the book promotion started about a month ago and that the theme is leaving a legacy. Hey guys, uh, Todd White here. I want to talk about this book. It's my first book I ever wrote and it's 16 years in the making, but it has my testimony in here and the value of that, the reality of that is showing that all things are possible with God. He's correct, but after having his free testimony online for so many years, why write a book to profit from it? So this is profound, and it's my step into the supernatural. A lot of people have asked, how do I prophesy? How do I get words of knowledge? How do I pray for the sick? This book is fully encased with that. My friends, spiritual gifts as spoken of in 1 Corinthians are given by God and in every believer. And there is no how do I with spiritual gifts because you can't learn them. So let the grace that's on this book hit you. Get it for a friend or get this book so you can be active in the supernatural and also free from guilt, shame, and condemnation. So we need to buy his book to be active in the supernatural? Let's be clear. For the first almost 1,500 years since Jesus' ascension, we did not have the ability to print books and people had no problem with being used by the Holy Spirit. We can see that the theme of leaving a legacy is on many of his videos since then, but he shared in this video that some people have already expressed concern with the title. My wife, my wife said someone complained about the title of my book that's coming out, Life is Short, Leave a Legacy. I think it's because like the word legacy is in there, I guess, I don't know. The other one says the Todd White story, so it's probably not that. It's so weird to hear that, that people complain about everything. Like it's the craziest thing. Now, when first seeing his title, the word legacy definitely did stand out. I'm thinking, where in the Bible does it teach to leave a legacy? Someone like Charles Spurgeon has left a legacy of the works he did in God's name, but I'm quite sure that wasn't his goal. Preaching Jesus was, and because of that, God used him and his works in Christ's name are now remembered. But if someone's goal is to leave a legacy, then it's doing something so that others will remember you and what you did. Even if it is for Christ, it's a goal for people to remember you. In this video, he continues to push book sales to the youth as young as six. And this little guy came up to me, he's like six years old. He goes, hey, Todd White, how are you? I go, I'm doing good. He goes, hey, I got your book, can't put it down. I'm already on page 60, and it was the next day. Really? Six-year-olds are getting that engulfed with an adult book? I was more into Dr. Seuss at that age. So I walked away and the Lord said, you wrote it so that a child can get it. And God spoke to him and said that. Get them this book, it will transform their life. I'm just trying to remember a time when I ever saw a room full of six-year-olds at my church all focused on reading an adult book. Anyhow, Eventually, we get to his official book launch posted today, May 1st, 2021. And here he talks about Dan Molnar's influence. And so many people have sowed into my life and so many people have imparted into my life. And Dan Moeller, I mean, I, I know that all of you know the testimony of Dan and what he's done in my life and what he still does. And Man, when he comes here, it's like Jesus coming into the house. It's amazing. Sorry, but to compare anyone as to Jesus walking in the room just sits wrong with me. And of course, Bill Johnson writes an endorsement as well. I'm going to read Bill's endorsement real quick. See if I cannot cry. I've known my friend Todd and author Todd White. He called me an author. <sighs> He's told me for years, you need to write. I'm not a writer. Well, you need to write. Just... Yeah. Why does he need to write? So he can make lots of money like Bill? And he continues on and cries over Bill's touching words, but we will skip that for now. But I will leave the full length to this video below. 
but this is a special book with an impartation on it. And so what I did was I shared my testimony in here, but it's not just the testimony. There's actually an impartation on the book. I'm not doing this just to sell them. Why would he say there was a special impartation on his book if it wasn't to sell it? But trust me, folks, he is just getting started. What do you say when you come to talk about your book? I want this, and I'm in the middle of writing another one right now. It's, it's amazing. I'm, I'm going to write as many as I possibly can. So, it seems like he's pretty excited about jumping on the book writing bandwagon, and soon he's going to be just like Bill Johnson, Chris Vallotton, and the others in Bethel. But, he does share a quick testimony. So I'm talking to this lady outside the drugstore. She looks at me. She goes, what do I do? I said, you don't have to do anything. You need to believe in what Jesus did. Shared the gospel with her simply. She said, okay, can we do this? I'm like, yeah. So we prayed. She got born again. This is what she said. She goes, I said, how do you feel? Now, I don't know about you, but I would never ask someone how they felt after saying a prayer and base them being born again on a feeling in that moment. That's very risky territory in my eyes, but he'll continue into what he considers dangerous. Because to ask somebody how you feel before they get born again is dangerous. Because they feel horrible, they feel depressed, they're angry, they're bitter, they might be like foaming at the mouth. That's not a good feeling. But based on his story, she seemed very excited to do this thing, as she said. So it doesn't seem to be a dangerous question. But I said, how do you feel? This is what she said. I feel like a weight has been lifted off of my life. And so we finish off with a common story. Based on someone's feelings, Todd tells us she was born again. This is as conclusive as someone at a Benny Hinn convention saying that they were healed. Emotions, music, and even coffee can elevate a person's mood, yet it doesn't mean it was the Holy Spirit. I'm going to finish off with a clip from my testimony video, Salvation, False Salvation, and My Story. This is just a short clip of when I had an emotional experience in a church and thought I'd been born again, but wasn't. If you haven't seen that video yet, I encourage you to watch the full video about how I came to be saved. But one way or another, feel free to leave your comments on the Todd White portion of this video below. But here it is. Now, the other time I thought I got saved was when I was 17. A friend from my elementary and junior high school days called me and invited me to a church because his running coach had invited him. I hadn't seen him in a long time and I believed myself to be a Christian at that point, so I went. At this point in my life, I was in my first band as a drummer and was newly into drugs, drinking and smoking, but as I said, I believed in God, so I thought I was a Christian. So we went to his church and at the end of the service, there were people on stage getting prayed over and then falling to the ground. This fascinated me. I wanted that God experience too, whatever it was. But there were these cute girls on the balcony checking us out, so I had to make a decision of meeting the ladies or having this God encounter I saw people having. Well, we decided to go on stage. And I remember people crowding around me and my friend and uh, they started praying. I, I think it was tongues, but I can't really remember. But after a short time, my friend fell to the ground, but I wasn't feeling anything, so they just kept on praying. After a while, I kind of gave in and fell back, but it was more to fit in rather than, you know, just stand there looking stupid. So when I got up, though, I saw my friend crying and shaking up against the wall. It was kind of freaky. It didn't look holy at all. He was pretty disturbed. And to this day, he's still not a believer and says he doesn't know what happened that day. But for me, I felt amazing. It felt like a vacuum had sucked everything out of me and left me happy and energetic and full of life. Yet, I went right back to my old lifestyle immediately, doing drugs and all that stuff, even making my own LSD. And I just did my best not to swear and tried to read my Bible at that point because, you know, that's what a Christian was supposed to do. There was no repentance, no mention of sin or anything about giving my life to Jesus as far as I remember, but I definitely had an experience and so did my friend, but his was not a good one. 
I really believe that many people today are having a God encounter similar to what I experience. They have fire tunnels, laughing, emotions, and some kind of experience spiritually, but all spiritual experiences are not from God. And as we see with the NAR movement, there's not much, if any, talk about sin, repentance, or giving your life to Christ. But I didn't know what true salvation was until I was really saved. So I think all these signs and wonders experiences with lots of talk about Jesus and happy music and people laughing gives people something they think is salvation, but isn't. 